Okay, so I wanted to do a review of this watch that I just got today. I got it from uh, Time Machine Plus, I believe, is the company. Let me look at the box. Yeah, TimeMachinePlus.com is my first order from them. They're based out of Texas. Um, they sent it UPS two-day air, so I, I got it today. Um, and this is the Longines uh, Spirit Zulu Time. Okay, so this is going to be the black dial, black bezel insert model. Um, so I'm very excited to unbox this. I've already opened it just to make sure everything's okay. Um, so I'll just walk through it and uh, just kind of do like a first impressions review for everybody. Because I haven't really seen many hands-on videos of this watch yet. Um, there are a few like official dealers and few official channels out there who have posted reviews and videos of it but I figured I'm a normal guy I figured I'd give you a normal guy's take on this watch so it comes in the Longines yellow pale yellow box outer box here uh, you open it up and the flat falls down you got like a kind of like a chamois material like a polishing cloth here it doesn't have any branding on it uh, it's just kind of there um, so that's nice just to wipe off the crystal uh, for example and then you open this up uh, it's got like some cushion there and then you have your your inner box the Longines gloss brown display box um, and then underneath this you have a slot here which has I'm not going to pull it all out but it has your warranty information it has your cost certification in there and it comes with like a leather embossed pebble grain leather uh, kind of like card wallet here where you can keep all your your materials, warranty information if you want. Uh, I just keep it in the box. Now, I believe if you buy this from Longines directly, they give you a free travel case. Now, I haven't seen pictures of the free travel case, so I don't know if they stick it in here. This is quite a big gap here, so I don't know if there's extra stuff that comes from Longines if you order direct from manufacturer. Um, it's sold out on the Longines website, at least the bracelet version is, which is the one I got. Um, so yeah, let's dive in. Let's open this up. You'll notice here, uh, it's got like a slogan, Longines, the world's most honored watch. And then it also says that on the outer box as well. And then when we open this bad boy up, it says it right there, just so you don't forget. Uh, the world's most honored watch. Then it has a cool image of, I think, which are like some medallions um, over here on the left. Longines has a very storied history aviation related which is why i'm glad they decided to do a, a, a gmt um i love gmts and when i saw longine release this uh, i knew that i had to have one to try it out uh, so here it is so this is the black dial um black ceramic bezel insert version with the blue 24-hour accent pointer and then the other blue accent is the zulu time text there very, very handsome looking uh, watch. You know, you could wear this with a suit. You could wear it on the weekends. Still has that tool watch look to it. That coin edge bezel. Um, the nice knurled crown there. The crown is pretty big, honestly, for this watch, I think. Um, which is standard on aviation themed watches. So they, they kind of stuck with a historically accurate design, I think. Uh, no crown guards, so if you're someone who is nervous about not having crown guards, this model's probably not for you. Um, very legible GMT. Um, I was looking at the new Tudor uh, SNG GMT that they recently released, and that 24-hour hand kind of blends in with the dial a little bit. So this one, very legible uh, with the blue accent, and the other two models um, are very legible as well. Uh, so they have a gilt dial version of this with a green uh, bezel insert, and then they have a more modern spin on this same watch, which is like a blue shiny dial with an orange uh, GMT pointer. Um, so I went with this one. It's very elegant, uh, kind of reserved looking. Um, and so black, I mean, black is sleek. So I went with black. Uh, and then I went with the bracelet because I always try to get the bracelet uh, if I can, because the bracelet's tend to be, in my experience, harder to find on the secondary market after you already have the watch. So you can always buy different straps for the watch, of course. Um, so I always like to have the original bracelet with it as well. So let's pull it out of here so we can talk some more about it. Um, in here is just an extra hang tag, uh, some 
barcodes and stuff like that. Um, and then of course there's the hang tag on here still. And then the Longines World Service medallion, um, five year warranty from Longines. So that's, that's nice. Um, all right, so let's look at this thing. Uh, so there we get a closer look at the dial. This is a slower beat movement. I think it's 26,600 instead of 28,800. Don't quote me on that. I don't have a spec sheet in front of me. Um, see, I already got fingerprints on the bezel insert. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's gonna get, it's gonna get smudgy, right? I mean, it's just the way watches are. Um, this one has a beautiful dome to the crystal here. See how it's all, it's like perfectly domed. Um, even with the insert, everything is flush, lines up perfectly. I mean, it's just honestly pretty cool. Um, not too thick for me. It might be too thick for some people, but honestly, it's a GMT. I think the thinnest GMT out there is the GMT Master 2. So, I mean, it's it's all it's all relative. Um, yeah, beautiful watch. I love the love the font choices they pick for the numbers on the dial. Um, love the hands, second hand. Love the accent colors on this model. Um, it was hard for me to decide between the three, but I, I ended up with this one because the black really stood out to me. It was very stunning. Date windows at six o'clock there. Um, signed crown. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, nice brushed case. Um, brushed bracelet with some polished accents in here. Okay, so it's not 100% brushed, which is nice. It's got kind of like that accent to it. This one still has a plastic on the side. I haven't taken it off yet. Um, standard Longines deployant buckle um, with the two tabs there. Uh, this one doesn't have, this one just has your standard five pin adjustment here. Um, the leather the leather strap on those models, I believe, come with micro adjustments. Um, so I've heard great things about those. So I, I'm, I'm gonna try and pick up a leather strap for this exact model. I don't think you can buy, I don't know if you can buy them from Longines. You can buy leather straps from the Longines website. I just don't know if it's the ones that they pair with this model specifically. So I'm gonna have to reach out to them and see. Um, Bi-directional, of course, bezel. Um, you know, it's not as clicky as I thought it would be. I mean, it's, it's solid, it's there, uh, but it's not loud, which I guess is a good thing, but it's not as, I guess, uh, authoritative of a click as I thought it would be. It's not a criticism, criticism, just an observation. Everything lines up perfectly, um, which I know these days on a watch of this caliber, it should. So that's, that's nice. The insert lines up with the chapter ring and everything else. So everything's aligned perfectly. I'll get that glare out of the way, hopefully. Um, the triangle at the top of the bezel insert is loomed. Um, so that has loom and then the, the numbers and the dial have loom. And of course the hands have loom. So this should light up very well uh, at night. Um, what else can I talk about? I mentioned the coin edge bezel. Longines have this uh, quick release strap. I'm not gonna demonstrate it here, uh, but there's a tab right there, you see that? Um, I, I think if you press down on that, um, it disengages the, the spring bar and you can pull this straight out from the lugs and do easy strap changes. Uh, at least that's that's how Longines market it. So I haven't tested that, uh, so I take their word for it. Um, but yeah, this is an excellent watch. I'm very happy with this purchase. I like it better than the Tudor Black Bay GMT. I'm just going to come out and say it. It's less expensive than the Tudor Black Bay GMT. I think it looks better than a Tudor Black Bay GMT. That's personal choice, of course. This is a very aviation-themed, aviation-forward design. If you're not an aviation geek... Um, and you like more of like a Submariner diver watch GMT look, then of course you're going to gravitate towards the Tudor or the GMT Master too. Um, but I think this, this hits well above its weight class. I mean, uh, for the price of this watch, um, you know, it's definitely worth MSRP. And if you can get it on sale, it's <laughs> going to be even more worth it. Um, of course the, the version with the bracelet is a little more than the strap, um, so there's that. Um, screw down crown, which is nice for water resistance. It's 100 meters, I think. Um, your first position is going to be your jump hour. Okay. 
and I've already set the time. I have not set the date yet. Um, so the way I set up my GMTs, I don't want to spend too much time on this, is I will I will adjust it to where the the 24 hour hand points to local time. So it's 16 16 ish right now. Um, local time, which is also 416, right? So if I were to travel across the country and go to California, for example, I need to go back three hours. So now I can just use the jump hour to go back. So now I have Pacific Standard Time uh, on the dial. And then on the 24 hour hand, I have Eastern Standard Time still. Okay, so that's one of the easiest ways to use the GMT function. Uh, you'll notice that um, when I go to use the jump hour, the movement does not stop. It, it keeps running, which is nice. I don't know if other watches stop. Um, so yeah, you can you can adjust this. This is also how you adjust the date as well. Um, so in order to advance the date, you have to take the jump hour and go around a 24 hour revolution each time to move the date. So it's a little cumbersome, time consuming, um, but the idea is that you know, you set it once and then hopefully you wear it so it doesn't run down or you put on a winder or you hand wind it, you know, a little bit each day. Um, so it doesn't run out. This has great power reserve. I think 72 hour power reserve, which will get you through a weekend. Uh, so if you take it off on a Friday afternoon and you switch into a sportier watch for the weekend, for example, you can put this back on Monday morning and she'll be running just where she left off. Um, that's how the jump hour works. Um, time setting is pretty standard. You pull all the way out. Of course, the second hand stops and hacks. And then this is where you're, you're going to see the 24 hour hand move along with the watch. Um, so this is how you would adjust your time, um, your 24 hour time. So let's say I'm setting this watch for the first time. It's 4 p.m. We'll go to 16. Uh, and then I, let's say it's 16, 20. So I'll go to 20. Okay, well, clearly the jump hour is not on 420, so how do I do that? So then I just go back to the first position here, and then I can use the jump hour, and then we're there. So that's kind of a quick and dirty explanation of how to set this watch. Um, screw down is nice, again. Um, doesn't really feel like it's screwing down, which is, is nice. I'm paranoid about cross-threading the screws though so i have to be careful with that um what else is there to talk about i mean this is a this is a, a great watch um like i said i think it hits well above its msrp i think i think if you can find one right now uh, i know the i know the strap versions are still available from Longines directly um but the bracelet versions seem to be very kind of hard to find um so if you can grab one and you want to grab one, I would suggest if it's your thing, go for it. I mean, I don't think you're going to be disappointed in this watch. I'll kind of demonstrate the size of it, actually. I'm not sure how big my wrists are. I'll have to measure them, put them in the description. It is a bigger watch. I forget what the I think it's 42 millimeter. Um, so that's kind of... My camera's kind of angled. It's kind of like a terrible example. I still need to size the bracelet. Um, so on my wrist, the lugs do not overhang at all. And then the bracelet, like, let's just assume it's there. It wraps the wrist pretty well. Um, the lugs could be curved a little more, I think, uh, to, to wrap to your wrist. But honestly, it's, it's nothing major. Um, it looks nice. It's a good size. I was worried it was going to be a little big on me, but I like the size of it. It's very legible as well. That's one thing I love about this watch. It's very legible. I can't remember if I just mentioned that like, like 10 minutes ago about the Tudor Black Bay. Um, the new model, the, the steel and gold that they came out with, that 24 hour hand seems, it seems to blend in. This one seems a lot more legible. The dial is very legible. Um, and you can kind of see the coloring of the, the, uh, the numbers on the dial. I'm gonna go turn the lights off real quick just to see I know this video is getting long because um, I'm curious so I have some natural light here uh, I don't think it's gonna show up because it's not really charged um, you can kind of see it in the triangle there let me just go shut the door all the way I have a screen door open so let's go close that
try not to kill myself here when I come back. All right, so yeah, it's faint because it just hasn't been charged yet. I haven't had this outdoors at all. I don't think it's even gonna focus, honestly. Uh, it might, there we go. So that's your loom shot, still very legible. I mean, look at that. The, the 24 hour triangle pops out at you. Yeah, of course the hour hand's behind the minute hand right now, but you can see the second hand has a loom pip on it. On it. Um, your triangle at the top, you know, so if you have to adjust it at night, you can. So this is, I mean, honestly, it's an awesome watch. Um, you know, if you're looking for a GMT and you're not sure about Tudor, I think this is probably up your alley, especially if you like aviation history, you like the aviation style watches. Um, this one right here is a winner in my book. So I'm going to size it, put it on the wrist, see how she runs. Of course, it's cost certified, so it should run very, very accurately. Um, and so, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, just a normal guy's take on this watch. Um, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm a watch lover, though. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, try and pick one up or at least go to an AD and see if, you, see if they have one to look at, at least. Um, as it's out of focus there. Such a clean dial. All right, I'll stop talking about it now. All right, take it easy, uh, and thanks for watching.